then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Do you believe in life after addiction? You better believe it. Now, the host of Life After Addiction. All right, you better believe it. Life After Addiction, Bruce Stanley. Man, it's good to be back. Yes, sir, and I'm Adam Comer, and man, today we're going to talk about my way or the highway. And man, we're probably going to talk about a little bit of some maturity in Christian living. What's that look like? What do we mean by that? Uh, And we have a great question at the end coming from Cadez, Kentucky. Hmm. You ever heard of Cadez, Kentucky? No, I don't know if I've ever heard of Kentucky either. (laughs) It's a great question. It goes along with what we're going to talk about, but... Um, yeah, so lead us in here, Bruce. Maturity in Christian living, my way or the highway, what do we mean by that? What are we talking about? Okay, well, man, one of the things that we, we believe in so much at S2L Recovery is that, you know, the thing we're dealing with here, even though people are coming to with an addiction problem, is we're really dealing with change and how to live a different life, so specifically the life that God calls us to live different than the, the life we were living in fact, the Bible calls it that uh, we were once in darkness and now we're in light. It says, wake, O sleeper. Mm. Uh, and so maturity in Christian living, my way or the highway, I think the reason why we're calling it my way or the highway is because we just take this rebellious stance yeah. that's based on pride that says, no matter what it is that I'm learning on how to live life differently, I'm still holding on to something that says I have control over, I I need to do it this way versus the way that it's being told to me to do. And because of that, because of that, it slows our maturity in our faith, Mm. meaning the growth that we're to continue to do past salvation, which the Bible calls sanctification, but it's really this growth model that God is saying to be more and more like Christ, and it's a maturing the Bible says that we we come in our salvations as infants, uh, children, uh, and that Paul even says that he had to sp- had to feed them spiritual milk in the beginning because they couldn't handle solid food. Yeah. But then he got frustrated with them later and said, "You should be eating solid food by now, but you're still a drinking spiritual milk," meaning that they weren't maturing, they weren't growing. Um, and what happens in that, especially in aftercare? Uh, leaving a program like ours and then going back out into life wherever you came from and trying to live that life differently from the things that you learned in the program the way God's calling you to, not just because you're going to be able to overcome the temptations from addiction, but you're you're going to receive blessings in your life because the choices that you're making now to live something different that God calls us to do, and that's for every human being, whether you're an addict or not. Yeah. And that's what I meant by one of the things we pride ourselves in our program is that we we treat people that come in there not like they're addicts, but just broken people, just like everybody else in this world is. And God has a message for all of us in how we are to mature. First, we come to our faith, right? That's that's the first thing we do. Uh, But then after that, we're called to grow. We're called to mature. We're called to be strengthened, to become bold, confident, assured, uh, accepting the identity that God's giving us and living that out. And man, Adam, I know you've been to more funerals than I have in this industry. Uh, we've been doing this for three or four years, but um, I, I can tell you that just since I've been doing uh, addiction recovery in this industry, I've I've seen people die. Yeah. I've seen people uh, stumble, relapse. Um, end up in prison, you know, something else happened that the, the consequence that they, of the choices that they made because they weren't maturing, yeah. because they still had the stance, my way or the highway. And that they would say with their lips, look, I believe in God, I love God, I want to do what God's asking me to do, but yet not really. I'm still holding on to something that says, Surely God will understand if I do it this way. I mean, the whole world is doing this stuff. It can't be that bad. Like, I'm a good person. (laughs) Yeah. So in essence, kind of the thing that I'm seeing also, and and I guess surrounding this issue of maturity, uh, of growing, and it's not like Bruce or I are saying, hey, you know what? We are matured, (laughs) right? We're saying we're maturing. We're growing, I think is the better word. We're growing and we have a desire to grow 
uh, and to just because it's 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 like food, as the Bible says, is word and just growth in that. Mm-hmm. But what I am gonna say is, it does seem like when someone is not growing, there is this my way or the highway mentality, which which inevitably is, I don't like correction, mm-hmm. I don't like reproof, uh, whether it be what God's word says, um, mm-hmm. it, it's gonna be my way or I'm out, or it's the highway. I don't like whether it be God's word, what it says, or the person that I should have in my life that I allow to speak into my life with mm-hmm. some sort of authority that knows me. I take my mask off. And it's just like I've hit a wall to a point. You know, we and I've talked about this just this week in class. It's like these guys, myself, all of us, we get to this certain place in life, and it's just a sweet spot. And we got there through submission and obedience to Jesus. And then it's almost like, okay, we're here. We're, it's sweet. I've got this now. Yeah. You know? And I'll, I'll just beat up the, the Christian faith just for a second here because there's this tendency. I remember when I first became Christian and started walking out this life in Christ uh, and, and, and maturity, I remember a lot of Christians that were telling me in the church said, because of my attitude, because of my uh, excitement and, and living this type of life and wanting to grow and just being thirsty for the word and all this kind of stuff that people tell me, oh, you're on your pink cloud right now. But you'll come down off that after a while and then things will level out. But right now, just enjoy it because, you know, God's got you on a pink cloud right now. And I remember saying this to my brother who's been a missionary for 35 years, his whole life. Uh, and <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> obviously, obviously lived a different life than I did. The choices he made. And I remember telling him this, and he said, Bruce, absolutely don't believe that. Yeah. Don't believe what they're saying. You can be that for your entire life. You can always have a sense of adventure. You can always feel like you're excited and thirsty and hungry for God's Word, and you will always desire to do something more, to grow more. And he says, you don't have to believe that. That's what others want you to believe because that's what they want to do. Again, my way or the highway, yeah. right? It's like they want to calm down. They don't want to, after a certain point, like continue to push themselves, to challenge themselves, to do the things that God's asking them to do that's hard so that they can grow. Um, and man, this all comes from the very premise of the curriculum that we teach, right? It yeah. comes out of Second Peter that Peter says, because of your salvation, now add to your faith. Right, because of the grace of God, because everything that's been given to you, not that you earned or deserved, but that you've just been given to you and you've accepted, now add to your faith these things. And the first thing he says is desire for goodness or excellence or virtue, depending on the translation. Yeah. And you, if you don't have this, right, and you're actually okay with just writing it out, reach the plateau, don't really have to do anything, anything more and like... Our pastor likes to says, you know, say, I've got my fire insurance car now. I'm not going to hell, so everything else is just gravy from here on us, right? Yeah. That's not what God's calling us to. And in that, what happens is we stumble because Satan, our, our enemy, is always looking for a crack. Now, he can't read our minds like God. He's not omnipresent, omnipotent, and, and omniscient, right? But right. he can watch you and look what you're doing. And he can play your, your reel just like a recruiter for a sports team, right? He's seeing all the mistakes you've made. And when he starts seeing you make them again, man, he, he's there, right there to, to cause you to stumble. And usually what happens is when we stumble again, it looks worse than the last time we did. Yeah, man. So you talked about the, the principles, and, and we've kind of fleshed that out in other episodes. But you know what I'd like to do, man? I, I think it would be wise. I think it would be cool to the next few episodes just to actually take one principle and really break it down. And I know if guys have come through our program, they've heard that. But I mean, just dialogue with you and I. So, so I really want to, I really want to do that. So be tune in. We're gonna we're gonna dive deep in some of this stuff. If you have questions, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this growth individually. What the Bible says. But Bruce, I can't shake it. I can't. And it's something funny. I have a scripture that just hit me this week, man. I'm going through Proverbs. And as you know, Proverbs is all about wisdom and all these other things. And and there's something about reproof. So so what what's your definition? How would you, in layman's terms, def, define the word reproof? Because I don't want to use just like biblical language without, you know. Yeah. Well, it means correction. Yeah. It means edif- edification. You know, there's another Bible word, but... It just means Correction. that we Perfect. gently like build each other up, point each other back in the right direction, you know, help 
to show to somebody, hey, brother, man, I love, like, why are you, why are you doing this? This is not what we learned from Jesus, you know, like, let, let's, let's get back, man. I love you. I see what you're doing. I, I, I want you to know, man, that the people care about you. And yeah. we, can, we can all see that you're kind of stepping off the track here, man. So that's what reproof is to be. And, and the thing is, is that God calls us to be gentle, right? To be compassionate, to be uh, better listeners than we are speakers, yeah. to, to roll out this way of reproof in a way that's not, you know, holding somebody accountable, judging them, you know, uh, in, in that manner, you know, that it's, it's a gentle nudge yeah. in the right direction. Now, sometimes, depending on what we're doing, that reproof could look pretty hard for somebody. It's like, brother, man, we've been through this three times already, right? Now, right. here comes the consequence, man. You, you, you're going to have to, because it's all out of love. God does the same thing. That's what he shows us. Yeah, yeah and that's the point. Like discipline, uh, as a, the pride comes in or the immaturity, we're talking about maturity, and the immaturity is I don't like discipline, I don't like reproof, and so it's my way or the highway. Because I don't like that. Something flares up inside of me. My pride flares up when you tell me when you've corrected me, as you said, uh, you've corrected something that I did was wrong, and I don't like that, Bruce. So it's my way or the highway, and I don't grow inside of that. Listen to what this proverb says. <laughs> this is this is Proverbs twelve one twelve one. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. <laughs> It actually uses the word stupid. It's stupid. And, that, I, and I, normally I do a lot of my studying out of the ESV, and that's, that's what it says in ESV. Yeah. But he who hates reproof is stupid. And, I mean, we're laughing about that, and, and we're cutting up. But, man, that's right. And, and, and it's hard to hear that, especially as just a, 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 the, the mindset and the giftings and the, the way that God's made me. You know, I feel like I'm a go-getter and I have this very alpha type mentality. And so it's hard to hear reproof, correction, discipline. But man, it's a lot easier to to fall under the authority of God's word and under under Christ and these things than to try to do this on my own. I have so much history that ends badly, man. Well, that in itself, what you're talking about is the approach of self-help. Yeah, which it's a billion dollar industry. I mean, and I'm not saying some of that stuff's not good for us on how to diet or how to manage money or this kind of stuff. But when it comes to like changing the course of bad habits, uh, you can't help yourself. <laughs> you know, what do they say? It takes 52 days to change a habit or something like that. I can't remember. I, don't know. I think it's changed. It used to be like 80 or 90. I think it's down yeah. to 60 now, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. And there's ways that people try to guide you, but when you're dealing with an addiction, man, it, it's more than just trying to stop cussing, you know. Right. And and there you can't help yourself. If you could, then we wouldn't have this epidemic we have right now, right? With addiction. Uh, here's another verse that I want to share. First uh, Thessalonians four three says, "For this is the will of God, your sanctification." Mm. And what is sanctification, Adam? Growth. It's growth. Yeah. It's maturing. It's becoming more and more like Christ. It's this growth that God calls us to. And it says right here, you know, this is the will of God. Now, how many times have you, and this may look different, but it's the age-old question of what's life all about? What's my purpose? How did I get here? Where's this all going? If there is this God, what does he want me to do? What does he want from me? You know? And here's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> the will of God. He wants you to grow. And obviously, the, there's something that has to happen before that because if you're talking about God and you're and you're listening to God, then you've already made a decision to follow God, and right. so therefore His will, which is what you're asking, what do you want me to do, God? What's this thing's all about? I mean, it's it's the mysteries of of God that people say they can't figure out because we because God's a mystery, and although there are things that God hasn't revealed to us. He certainly has revealed to us things that we would know exactly what we're supposed to do. And here's one of them. And it's not the only place that mentions this in the Bible. And, and I think it's just proof. Uh, and what we're saying in this episode, which is, man, yeah, God wants you to follow him. God wants you to love him. God wants you to surrender your life to him and, and name him Lord of your life, which means boss. Lord means boss. Right. Right. But the way you're going to be able to endure this life, escape corruption in this world, and, and the way that evil works in this world, it tries to 
cause you to stumble. I mean, what is the three things that the enemy of God wants to do? He wants to rob, right, destroy, and kill. And and so th- those are his those are his strategies. He, yeah. he doesn't want to do anything other than to ruin you. Yeah. And if if you don't believe if you believe in a God, then you have to believe in God's enemy. And that's what he's out to do. And if you're not growing, you're not getting stronger, you're not going to be able to, on your own, um, to withstand the temptations of yourself, your own evil desires, and the, and the ones that are out there in the world. And <clears throat> this, this is what we teach our guys, right? Yeah. And I wanted to share something with you that somebody, a new guy, came into the program last Thursday, and I was talking to him on Monday. No, Tuesday, yesterday. Yeah. And the things he said to me, man, it was so amazing, which in any other situation, I think it would cause alarm for somebody. But to me, you know, given this, this biblical standard in which we were trying to grow these guys, teach these guys, and pass their addiction, and he says to me, Bruce, he's like, man, there's so much going on, I can't tell you like how bad I want to leave this place. He's only been there four days, right? And because this is going on, this is going on, this is going on, man. It's, it's, it, man, I've, I've had to stop myself three different times since, since I've been here uh, last Thursday to keep myself here and to not go because every part of me, I'm just uncomfortable. I'm full of anxiety. I'm just stressing out about all these things, you know. And, and I, I said to him, I said, man, I'm going to say something to you that's going to sound really odd. And I said to him, those feelings that you're having, that's exactly the way you're supposed to be feeling. Right. And it's because this is unfamiliar, it's foreign to you, it's uncomfortable, it's challenging. And if you weren't feeling those things, and then I would be more worried. Right. Because that would mean that something's not happening. Yeah. Like you're you're being confronted with the truth and you're and you're battling it. And look, man, you're still here. Yeah. Right. You haven't left. You've told yourself, look, I'm still gonna do this thing, even though all these things are going on. Man, that's exactly the way you're supposed to feel. And because that's change. Change feels like that. Yeah. And the problem with my way of the highway is that most people don't want to embrace that. You know, we, we live in a culture that says, man, you have to be happy all the time. Any, any time that you're going through a circumstance that's not making you happy, well, you've got to correct that because your goal is to be happy. Yeah. And it takes real courage, man, to go through uncomfortable change and to stick with it. Um, but... The beauty of all that with God is that there's real blessing behind it, you know, yeah. versus doing it yourself. God's going to reward you for that courage, that 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 ability to abstain from things and and to endure past the things that are feeling in your stomach just awful, crazy, out of your head. Just like I get, I got to run, you know. Yeah. And, and God's going to give you peace. He's going to give you joy. He's going to give you a sense of confidence in that growth that you continue to keep pushing forward in. And and these things are the things that actually help us to endure, help right. us to succeed. Right. Get this one right here. Doing wrong is like a joke to a fool. <laughs> but wisdom is pleasure to a man of understanding. And man, that steps on toes because how often, uh, and, and I mean, my toes, your toes, it's at certain points in our life, and, and I could just tell you, like, in, in, in the program at the lodge, man, down there, there's so much There's so much talk of death talk is what we call it, yeah. right? I did this much. You did that much. I had this connect. You had that connect. We could drink this much, blah, blah, blah. And we just call it death talk. But how silly. And everybody's cutting up about it. But how silly is it, man? The Bible says you're a fool. And, and as you think about that, it makes sense to me because, man, I wrecked my life because of this stuff. Mm. My wife was divorcing me because of this stuff. I hurt the people that love me the most because of this stuff. I was a fool for laughing at it, you know? Mm-hmm. That's silly. And, and so I want to kind of roll into the question here because it's also going to add to our time as we close practically what we're talking about, yeah. right? We're talking about growing. Mm-hmm. And so here's the question. It says this, other than the four pillars, and this is obviously someone who knows the four pillars, uh, which is read God's word. This is our daily four pillars. Read God's word, pray, have good fellowship, and, and walk in action. Your call to action, walk in it. So other than the four pillars, what would you consider to be the most important key to long-term recovery after leaving S2L? And this is Cody from Cadez, Kentucky. Mm. So practically, okay, what's the key? The import, what's the most important key 
the most important thing to long-term outside of those four pillars? And I don't know that you can answer that that doesn't fall under some category of the pillars, but we could be practical here, right? We could, yeah. we could give some practical things here. Yeah, the first thing I would say is trust. Wow. Trust in God. I mean, that's one of the biggest things. In fact, I think it's the common denominator of every guy who comes into our program. No matter what the drug use, no matter what the history is, no matter what the brokenness was, uh, that, that everybody has a trust issue. I mean, I can, I can read God's Word. I can be in fellowship. I, I, can, uh, I can continue to take action. I can be in prayer. Uh, but if I don't trust God with the outcomes of my life, then I'm back to my way or the highway. Yeah. I've got to have this level of trust that says, even though I can't see what's actually happening or what will happen, I've got to trust that it is going to happen because God's promised it to. Yeah. And I just got to stick to do these things and I have to believe that there's going to be some evidence of it at some point and I have to, I just have to keep at it. I've got to trust God. Yeah. And I would say one of the most important keys, and, I, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to, I, everything I'm going to say, someone could tie into the four pillars, uh, but one of the most important things is having a community, being in a community and serving, mm. serving. Like uh, find a body of believers, a church that you could dive into uh, and not just that, not just a Sunday and a Wednesday kind of guy. I mean, that, that's, mm. uh, I mean, more than that, right? Like right. more, like you're doing life with people. Uh, and, and what I mean by doing life is you're, you're like, you're living in a way that you're, you're intentional, right? Mm. You're, you're loving people. You're the body of Christ. You're the bride of Christ. Uh, and that's such an important piece yeah. to growing and maturity, right? Um, because otherwise you get in your own devices, you get in your own head, and, and you, you begin to, if you're not around people, it's probably because you don't want them to see something going on, right? Or you don't enjoy reproof. And I think we talked about what that is. Yeah, man, I will tell you just from my own experience. Okay, so Adam, you know, I wrote this book of the, the principles that we teach in our curriculum. Yeah. So I didn't go through an S2L program and be taught stuff. This is what God taught me. And I'm not saying that uh, God doesn't teach other people. and He only taught me. <laughs> I just happened to be the one that was able to receive it. Uh, um, and, which I know others have, and I had this desire to share with other people. And I was already a teacher, so I just wrote I wrote a book. Uh, but everything that is in that book comes from the Bible and my own testimony of how I put it into practice in my life. And one of the things that, to answer this question about what else can I do, and you're going to have to find mentors in your life. God, who you're called to trust, right, is putting people in your life. He's surrounding you with people who have the authority to give you direction. Listen to them. It, it's one of the rules I had to give myself at the very beginning mm. is I had to trust God and His Word, and I had to trust the people that God was going to put in my life that I knew that they came from God based on the way I could have discernment in their living. But when I realized that, man, I, and, and these people weren't necessarily older than me. My, my mentor that God chose for me, who he and I are still good friends today. We meet uh, once a month, but we used to meet two times a week at the beginning. Now, he's younger than I am, doesn't have an addiction background at all. But man, he's a very knowledgeable, trustworthy guy when it comes to the Word of God. And he needed to teach me. I need to be around this guy. Yeah. And you're, you're going to notice that there are going to be people in your life uh, because God's putting them there, not because you, you're just, uh, you know, hoping or, <laughs> or on a wish, right? But God's going to do that because he knows that's what you need. Yeah. And, and you've got to approach them and listen to what they have to tell you and take their advice, not my way or the highway, their way, which is God's way because God's putting these people in your life. And listen to what they have to say. Stop questioning and just do it, right? In the same way that you should do that in reading God's word. But in terms of service, like what you're saying, man, one of the things that helped me the very most when I first started walking this path in God it was a lady at my church who I came to to try to help me with my finances because somebody at the church, I said, man, I'm so far in debt, like addiction, it does that to you, right? Right. And my wife and I were going through a divorce. I was living on my own. And uh, anyway, I guess that's another whole story. But one of the things she should suggested to me at the church, she goes, you need to get involved. You need to do something. Yeah. You, you can't just come to church and sit here and then come and talk to me and then go back to your house and pray. And You need to get involved, which is fellowship, right? Yeah. 
but but specifically in serving. And the thing that she suggested to me, she says, you know what, you're new to this church, the best way for you to get uh, to know everybody and for everybody to know you and to feel like you belong here is to just be a greeter. And she gave me the guy's name at the church to go and to sign up for it. And yeah, the next thing I know, I'm just standing at the door, opening a door for people coming into church on Sunday. Yeah. And I'm wearing a name tag that has my name on it. And so almost immediately, people started remembering my name. And it, I'd be walking down the hall and say, hey, Bruce, you know, because they saw me from the door, they knew my name. And it automatically made me feel like I was giving back mm. just by smiling. And hey, it's hard to have a bad attitude when you're full of gratitude, right? Yeah. And just smiling and greeting people and saying, hey, you know, welcome, the door. welcome, you yeah. know, God bless your day. And, and, uh, and to feel the sense of belonging that kept me from isolating and made me feel like I, I had a, I belonged. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's why I'd say that's the time we have, but Hey, plug in, I mean, growth, this growth model, it's, it's something that you should just, you, you have a desire to grow. And, and I think as we roll out the principles, uh, the next few episodes, if the, if you're still hungry, like I just want to know more, I want to know more, really pay attention to the next few episodes. Cause that's what we're going to focus on, man. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on these, these things that the Bible says that you should add to your faith, which means you should be growing towards Christ and, and man, not making it my way or the highway. You mentioned a mentor. I just want to add to that. That's perfect. That, that's something that you need to do to grow. And, and I've heard it this way. You need to have a Paul, a Barnabas, and a, and a Timothy in your, hmm. uh, in your, if you don't have those three people, here's the Paul. The Paul is someone that's mentoring you. The Barnabas is someone that walks beside you and just encourages you. Hmm. Like he lifts you up, encourage you. And, and then the silent, the Timothy, you need to have someone that you're mentoring. Who are you pouring into? And, and you need to be able to identify those people in your life. Uh, that If you can identify those, man, you're you're kind of, a, I believe you're in a place that, that you're growing. And if you can't, which one are you not? You know, and then seek that out. You know, don't force yourself to be someone's mentor. But if you're being mentored and you're growing and you're available and you're doing and you're serving, that opportunity will come. Yeah, God will put that person in your that's life. That's exactly right. Yeah. So that's it. Bruce, Life After Addiction. You better believe it. Life After Addiction is a production of S2L Recovery. If you have any questions you'd like answered on the podcast, email them to info at springtolife.net. That's info at spring, the number two, life.net. And for more information on addiction recovery, visit s2lrecovery.org.